All right, sorry to be the last one to speak and being between you and your lunch. Um, so this work was done during my sabbatical uh, last year. I worked with some colleagues at the University of Toulon who are radar remote sensing specialists and uh, learned a, lo a lot of new interesting things and we came up with a uh, new approach to perhaps implement early warning systems for near shore tsunami events. Um, as we know, you know, tsunami hazards are very uh, catastrophic for coastal areas and uh, warning systems are required to uh, help mitigate those uh, events and uh, warning systems, uh, traditional warning systems using uh, tsunami scenarios, uh, pre-calculated scenarios and uh, dark buoys and so forth have proved very, very efficient, but mostly for far field events, as we heard again today, uh, when the source is in the near field, as it is the case for many large subduction zones we've been seen in Japan, in Indonesia, Cascadia, uh, tsunami propagation times can be as low as 15, 20 minutes. Uh, submarine mass failures, we've heard about those too, uh, that occur near or on uh, the shelf or continental shelf slope uh, can be also very close to shore, so propagation times are also quite low. And by the time the tsunami impacts the coast, you haven't even detected the occurrence of the tsunami yet. You can uh, only observe it by its effects. And there are uh, very few um, means of measurements deployed near shore that can resist large tsunamis. Uh, so um, the radar remote sensing is a different approach which has been proven uh, for measuring coastal currents. And uh, so the idea here is to try to ap apply it to tsunamis. And, and the idea is not new, but we want to do it in a sort of a, a better way. So here's an example of uh, one of our own simulations in uh, our group of the Tohoku tsunami with a mixed source, a co-seismic and landslide, because we identified a large landslide uh, off of uh, uh, Tohoku. And, um, so you, you could tell if you looked at the time that it took about 20, 25 minutes for the tsunami to arrive. Um, we've also worked, we, we heard uh, Babak's talk on, on the Upper East Coast on, on landslide tsunamis, and they're also quite close to shore. For the different areas we've studied, the propagation times could be between 40 and 60 minutes. So... Um, the radar remote sensing of currents is not new. That has been proposed. There is a CODAR system has been proposed by Barrick and others, and uh, also applied to tsunami um, on some um, uh, limited extent that I will detail. The principle is a black uh, scattering um, principle. That is, if you have a, a radar wavelengths, electromagnetic wavelengths, say for a four and a half megahertz radar like the one we are working with, the wavelengths would be 66 meters, the bright wave wavelengths would be uh, 33 meters. This would create a resonance in the radar signal and that's where you would have most of your detection. And that corresponds to a wind wave, an ocean wind wave of about four second periods. Those waves are in the ocean all the time. So, which means you can uh, detect uh, those black waves through radar signal. Now, when a current uh, near the surface causes Doppler effects in the waves, then that causes shifts in the do Doppler uh, radar spectrum that can be detected, measured, and inverted to get the current. So that's the principle, and that's operational for coastal currents. The Stradivarius radar that is developed by the, f uh, the firm that collaborates to this project in France has some uh, novelty in phase coding and is able to look at two to three hundred kilometers offshore with good accuracy. But we cannot beat the physics of tsunamis. Uh, the physics of tsunamis is such that currents are quite uh, low and small in deep water and they only become detectable once the tsunami is on the shelf which in general is too late to offer the warning. Um, but nevertheless, in those situations of shelf, a reanalysis a posteriori of uh, radar data that, uh, for radars that were in place in Japan and in Chile during the Tohoku event showed that they could have been detected if the algorithms for looking for tsunamis had been implemented. So currents caused by tsunamis through their effects on the black waves can be detected. Now, the problem is how far can they be detected? So, a direct detection uh, usually requires the tsunami current to raise above the background current and all the sources of noise, and that means about 
20, 25 centimeter per second. Uh, the linear wave theory tells you, you know, based on uh, long wave current and, and green slow, that uh, the tsunami current will be proportional to the inverse of the power three quarter of the depths. So they will kind of grow exponentially in shallow water, but will be quite uh, weak in, in deep water. So if you take a half a meter tsunami in 3,000 meters of water, the current would be three centimeter per second. When it gets to 25 centimeter per second, the depths would be 167 meters. By that time, it would be almost or on the shelf, and therefore, if the shelf is narrow, as in many regions of the world, there could be almost no warning time. So the direct detection requires uh, this uh, capability. Uh, here is, uh, because we were in France, we simulated tsunamis in France, uh, 8.7 source in uh, north of Algae, and this is not the wave elevation, it's the current. Current currently about five centimeters per second, and it's gonna enter the Gulf of Lyon on the west of southern France here, and you can get, start seeing red colors indicating that the current now uh, increases and of course the tsunami slows down and if you see the contour it means by the time the current reached 20 25 centimeter before it reaches the south of France Camargue and so forth it would take about half an hour so if you had a radar deployed in this region as uh, Diginext is planning on doing with a uh, bi-static configuration which means uh, transmitting antenna is going to be uh, not at the same location as the receiving antenna transmitting antenna in Camargue, receiving antenna almost in Spain, you could cover this whole area of the Gulf of Lyon and measure, um, now this will be the same thing repeated with a little bit more uh, accuracy. So you see the tsunami five centimeters per second, it gets on the shelf, no shelf on the east uh, of the southern France, so immediately the tsunami hits the shore. But on the Gulf of Lyon, you have a shelf, and these are the modular velocities, and they uh, remain detectable for quite some time. Now, if you look at the refraction now of the tsunami, you can see the bathymetry here as expected, uh, and this is again the velocity, not the surface elevation. You can see that the crests are bending, of course, when they reach about 100 meters, they're almost sure parallel, but uh, parallel to the bathymetry. So we have fairly long crested uh, tsunamis and those uh, alternating large and small currents. So this pattern of up and down current can be detected, of course, by the traditional Doppler effect, but again, it requires the currents to be strong enough. Uh, last example is a landslide tsunami in a, a little canyon, uh, La Cazero, here. And the tsunami goes to the east initially. And you can see due to refraction that, of course, is going to orient itself now uh, towards uh, the north as it bends around the bathymetry and move towards the south of France. Now, if we look at... Um, the velocities, now uh, the velocity on a scale of 10 centimeter per second, uh, the same thing is going to happen. Uh, we're gonna see the pattern of uh, tsunami currents bending and uh, if the radar is deployed with uh, the transmitter somewhere here and the receiver somewhere here, this whole area is going to be covered. All right, so now I get to the core of the issue which is how do we uh, study this? Um, so the radar signal, S of T, uh, is affected by the Doppler effect, and the Doppler effect is calculated uh, by the uh, signal Doppler spectrum. Uh, the black frequencies, the red lines, can be predicted theoretically. That is where the Doppler spectrum would be if there were no current. If there is a current, there is a shift proportional to the current velocity, and therefore, we can calculate the current, provided it is strong enough to raise above background noise. So the idea now is to develop a new, a new algorithm. So the principle of it is based on the physics of waves, which is if you follow a wave along its own wave ray, the current caused by the wave is very strongly autocorrelated in space when it propagates through that ray. So if you take two different locations along the same ray and you take a time lag equal to the propagation time of the tsunami, which is calculated with a simple equation for a long wave, 
between those two selves, then the correlation should be maximum, the correlation of the currents will be maximum for that time lag. Now, we, we verify that this is true for the signal, so we don't have to actually calculate the current, which is the problem because the current has to be at least 20 centimeters per second, but the signal itself will be affected by that uh, current and the correlation of the signal in two different radar cells will show a high correlation for the proper time lag corresponding to the long wave propagation speed. Now, sources of noise such as background current and other noises, they are uncorrelated, so they don't affect the correlation. And therefore, you can beat the tsunami physics in terms of now detecting current as small as 5 centimeters per second through their effect on the correlation of the radar signal. So to verify that, we use a simple uh, tsunami and radar simulation. The tsunami is an enveloped soliton shoaling on a 2D beach. Now, the radar equations are complete. You don't have to understand the details, but the principle is you have second-order waves, random waves. You have second-order radar signal calculated as Fourier transforms of, of the random waves. And the important thing is this phase function, which has a memory term due to the current. The signal also has all the sources of noise you would have in nature. So that is, of course, uh, coming from the modeling of, of the Stradivarius system and the field testing of the system itself. So an enveloped soliton is a simple set of sinusoidal waves modulated by a solitary wave. And we did a propagation with uh, linear long wave theory. And you can see the shoaling uh, increase of the elevation and currents, as would be expected. So now, what does the radar will uh, see in that situation? First of all, we have to place some waves. So we use a directional pearson moscovich spectrum to create multidirectional C state because you need that for radar detection. And then here is um, the type of Doppler spectra we can get. So in the vertical direction is a range from the radar, 80 to 230 kilometers. Here is a frequency on each of those, which is a snapshot at a given time, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes in tsunami propagation. You have the Bragg um, frequencies, and you can see the apparent appearance of this snaky behavior, oscillatory, which shows that there is a current that modulates uh, the BRAC um, frequencies left and right. So that current can be inverted. And sure enough, now those cases have, of course, a current that's at least 0.2 meter per second. And those currents are strong enough to be detected. This is a second order signal. We don't have to worry about it. We can uh, deal with it too. Now is a new algorithm. So in the direction of a radar ray, which is here is just straight offshore, we picked up 51 cells of three kilometers each. And here is what the current would look like in those cells when it's shifted by the propagation time. So you can see the current superposes itself nicely uh, for a correlation time of 300 seconds. Now here is a correlation as a function of lag. And for the current, as expected, we have a nearly correlation of one for the lag of zero. So now, for the radar signal, here is what we get. Near the lag of zero, we get a peak of correlation. If we average over all the, the radar cells, we get this nice average peak of correlation. And without current, no correlation at all. So now here is uh, the basis for a detection algorithm. You can, between two radar cells or multiple radar cells, permanently calculate correlations of the radar signal for the propagation time of a long wave. Only a tsunami can cause a long wave that can propagate in a consistent manner in space and time. So suddenly the correlation goes from flat to peak. It means a tsunami is coming. And you can follow it as a function of time. So now you can refine um, second order uh, we pick up the analytic signal. The analytic signal does some signal processing that Fourier transform removes the negative frequencies back, uh, inverse Fourier transform. Now you get a perfectly clean correlation without even higher order frequency oscillations. And then we played with the noise. We said, how about we divide the tsunami by two? We divide the wind by two, which means we divide the sea state by four, and we multiply the noise by three. And here's what we get. Now, of course, it's much more noisy, 
but the, the average correlation is still visible. And then if you remove the current, it goes flat. So it works even with a lot of noise. So in conclusion, so here is a possibility now to deploy a fairly inexpensive system that's going to be dense in space and time because it can cover hundreds, literally hundreds of square kilometers and provide in fairly small cells, three by three kilometers or so, uh, information on the currents. And with the detection algorithms we've uh, proposed, um, we could then detect the approach of a, of a long wave, which of course would be a tsunami. Uh, in case of the seismic tsunami, the, the seismic uh, networks would tell you that something happened. For landslide tsunamis, you may not even know that one has been generated. You will just see suddenly uh, the radar signal showing correlation. The next step is of course now to use actual uh, events simulated with the full model and, and do the, f the full algorithm on, on a simulated tsunami. The radar is being operational uh, very soon, in maybe in a, a month or two in uh, the south of France, but probably will not measure a tsunami anytime soon. They are thinking about the French carabines for a second site, which could be a site for more active tsunami genic uh, uh, areas. And um, we shall see. That's work in progress. Thank you. Okay, we have time. One question here. Yep. So I, I spoke quickly. So I said that if we can, de we can detect five centimeter per, se per second here. The tsunami I simulated for um, algae had five centimeter per second in 3,000 meters of water. Okay, that was an 8.7 uh, earthquake. So uh, the new algorithm possibly can go in very deep water, way beyond the shelf. Uh, to the limit of the range of the radar. The radar uses um, radar waves that propagate through the surface of the ocean and it can go to two to 300 kilometers. It has phase coding so it can detect the different backscattered signal. So the, the direct way using Doppler spectra is probably limited to 100, 150 meters of water. Therefore, it's only useful for a wide shelf. But the, the algorithm based on correlation can possibly go way beyond that in deep water. So first part, uh, what was the second one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the, the currents, the background currents, we, we tested a background current which you know, is not going to be spatially correlated in two uh, arbitrary uh, situated radar cells. So when you do the correlation, of say uh, a part of a gyre of the current and another part of the gyre of, of current separated by 50 to 100 kilometers, it's going to be uncorrelated. But the tsunami signal traveling on a ray between those two cells is extremely correlated. And so therefore, uh, the background currents don't show up in the correlation. But they affect, uh, of course, the Doppler spectra, but in, not in a way that is correlated. And that, that is the secret of, of the new approach. Yes, Mike. So I know these are commercial system phenomena, right? Yes. Um, is there sufficient coverage in, say, I know we've talked about the Med, but in the, say, the East Coast of the U.S., um, in order to, to, to have that, uh, to maintain that level of Right. The CODAR system I briefly mentioned operates at a 30 megahertz or so, so its range is actually a lot less than the radar I was uh, looking at, which operates at 4.5 megahertz, so it can go beyond. Uh, but provided you have enough range uh, for whatever is installed on the East Coast, you can detect currents on, on the shelf. With an, an algorithm looking for tsunamis, uh, then you possibly have um, means of detecting them. Uh, but you will not go in very deep water with, with the CODAR systems. Right. Yes. 
Uh, well, uh, it, it's, you know, if you have a wide shelf like on the East Coast, uh, you, you would still have, um, you know, 40 minutes of propagation and, and you can issue a warning, yes.